Beauty businesswoman Bernadette Suarez is one of New Zealand's most successful female entrepreneurs. Her award-winning products sell internationally but were first developed in her home kitchen and she now uses her own business journey to inspire others through speaking. She's also just released her workbook, Outrageous Living, to further share some of her secrets to her success. Welcome Bernadette. Thank you. First up, tell me a little bit about these award-winning products. What are they? Oh, so I've got four beauty brands, uh, two are makeup and, uh, and two are hair removal. And you would have heard of Radi Essence and Natural Glow and, mm -hmm. and my two hair removal brands are Bodies and Faro. And you started making them all in your kitchen? Yeah, so Bodies I started in 2002 and my first batches were made on my stove top. <laughs> wow. I want to go back a bit further because you grew up in India. Your, your father had a very good position and there's a story about you uh, doing something with his business card. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, in India, you know, like a lot is based on, you know, who your father is and what your status is. There's a class uh, structure still mm -hmm. around there, even to today. Um, and so, yeah, so my dad was a public prosecutor, which is sort of like a commissioner of police, sort of second grade, you know, uh, assistant commissioner of police. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, yeah, so we had to travel with his business card everywhere. If you ever get into trouble, you just take out his business card and... Whip out dad's yeah, business card, yeah. you're right. And we were all right, yeah. <laughs> we did it a few times, yeah. So why did so. you move to New Zealand? Um, I think I got I got married at 20, uh, just before I turned 21, and uh, it was not going to be possible to have a, you know a home on our own and to live separately. We would have to live in a joint family, so that was one of my reasons <laughs> for moving out. I couldn't see myself ever living in a joint family, and yeah, just wanted to have my own family and my own home, and yeah, so uh, that was a, a motivating factor. And uh, yeah, just really getting out of India. There was a lot of when I, in '89 when we left. There were a lot of um, a sort of uh, religious sort of riots uh, going on around us. In fact, two years after we left, I think they were one of the worst religious riots ever. So um, yeah, so that was always, you know, always at the back of our mind. And yeah, is it easy to achieve business success here in New Zealand? I think New Zealand is one of the best places to launch a business and to start a business. It's a smaller market. Uh, we have the barriers to enter a market is probably the fewest that I've ever seen across the world in Australia. In fact, just, you know, Australia is so much harder. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, New Zealand is probably one of the best places to uh, launch a business, yeah. Now, you were a stay-at-home mum for many years, and then obviously you started your products from your kitchen. How did you launch your products into the marketplace? How did you get them from the kitchen to... The globe. Yeah, yeah, I was just really fortunate. You know, business is you know about definitely about hard work, but there's also a lot of bit of a lot of luck involved in it as well. Being at the right place at the right time, and uh, so I, I really feel quite blessed with you know with everything that's happened. Um, so I was yeah busy cooking away on my stovetop. Uh, found I had quite a few customers at my door. I had about 80 customers. I remember coming to my door and I just couldn't cope literally. I wonder what the neighbours thought you were doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> with selling from my you know door. And uh, so I thought, oh, the best thing is I'll stick to the manufacturing because I needed to protect the formulation. This was proving to be popular, and I'll get other women who are perhaps at home who need some extra cash and pay them a commission, and they can start selling my products. So I put an ad in my church newsletter. And not, a, not one woman turned up uh, to see me after service. And I thought, oh, this is really weird. But then there's this guy starts walking towards me. And I thought, oh, quite wrong. Because I was busy at that time with my first, it was a hair removal product. Mm. So I would have these waxing parties where I would actually <laughs> wax people's <laughs> legs. So I mean, I just did things the way I thought I could do them. And I just did them. It was, there was no formula. I just did my own thing. Well, it's interesting you say that, no, no formula. I know that in New Zealand, we've got that Kiwi ingenuity thing where we kind of, everyone's got an idea for something. Turning that idea into reality, have you got a top tip or top tips for people wanting to get into business? I think it's about being confident in what you have. I mean, that's always been something that I've, uh, you know, done and I'm really confident in what I have. It's whether it's my beauty products or the book or whatever. This is me, this is what I've got. I love it, you know, and if we come across from that perspective, you automatically sell. So selling is a number, I realize very quickly in business, I have to really sell well. Mm. And I didn't really think of myself as a seller, but a seller is all about loving what you have and being confident in what you have. And when, when people see that, they automatically want what you've got. Mm. Mm. So I think that's the main thing, yeah. Are there certain things that you do in your daily life now that you, you think help to continue your success or help you to achieve success? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm someone that always wants to learn a lot. I'm always I'm quite curious and nosy. I, I love to like look at new things and I'm always checking things out and that definitely helps as well. So, you know, with beauty, obviously, always looking to see what else is available on the market. And um, yeah, so I'm always looking around at new things and, and always learning as well. I think learning is one of the other key things in being in business. Mm. You can never know enough. In fact, the more you know, the you realize the less you actually mm. know. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So tell us about your new book. This, this looks phenomenal, this workbook. Outrageous living, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just, um, so there's always, I, you know, I've been telling my friends for the last 10 years, there's a book, there are a couple of books in me. So for the last 10 years, I've been talking about it, but never really had the time to sit down and write it. And then in the last year, I began to pick up pace and write a bit more, and the last six months even more. And um, yeah, and I basically write a lot when I'm traveling or if I'm, you know, just thinking about things or, not, you know, even when I'm not in a good space, that's a very therapeutic thing for me to do. So to it's write. a workbook, so we can do some writing as well, but you want us to do something outrageous, is that right? Yeah, so, so the, basically the title is all about like not doing the run of the mill kind of stuff. Stuff. Mm -hmm. It's about you know just getting out there and sometimes doing something different, uh, and there's nothing wrong with being outrageous and doing something quite different and out of the ordinary. Being so, outrageous yeah. is incredible. It's such a good thing to do. Well, thank you so much for this. It's been a pleasure having you here. Bernadette's guide, Outrageous Living, is available right now, and you can check out her website too for more information.